I have been behind the chair, it's gonna be my 19th year this year. That kind of tells my age, huh? My first client was my next door neighbor and this was at the age of 10. My parents literally took my room and turned it into a salon because they were sick of people coming in and out of the house, tracking dirt and all these strangers. So my neighbor was my first client and it was at the age of 10. I officially got started actually um, my high school, my junior and senior year. So instead of going to a regular high school, I went to a vocational school to where your junior year you can take six classes of cosmetology and then the other three classes are like math, science, and PE. And I did that for two years straight. So when I graduated from high school, I had my high school diploma and my cosmetology license. I was at the age of 17. So my day to day is exactly how my head is. It's a little bit all over the place, but first thing first, I always start my day off with the gym to kind of set my sanity, to prepare me mentally for what is about to happen. I mean, as a stylist, we're always touching different different types of hair, heads, no matter what set you're on, behind the chair, or even traveling and doing hair. You're around a bunch of different energy. So I think mentally, you have to prepare yourself in the morning. And that's how I do is go to the gym. Then I start my day off usually at the salon, anywhere in between like eight or 10. And after I'm at the salon, this usually happens on Fridays, I go half day and I like to do editorial whether it's with a company or if it's something just for me to get creative and to be inspired. So, and then after that, the end of the day, I'm usually on a plane. <laughs> I have been published within this last couple years um, with Elements Magazine, Hunger Magazine, People, Modern Salon, and also one of my favorites is Tantalum. So that is the next up and coming one. Um, as for celebrities, I have, I've got to have my hands into pretty, pretty amazing human beings. They, yes, they are celebrities, but I've actually became very close with them and now they've become clients for quite some time. Um, MJ from Shaza Sunset, Paula Abdul, actually Jordan Knight, Holly Madison, off the top of my head. Oh yes, and Grace Elizabeth. Yes, so different brands that I do, well, that I have been working with recently is Babilis, which is our my favorite styling tools, especially on set and behind the chair. And then certain celebrities, I actually, have quite a few under my belt these days, which is really impressive. You know, hard work pays off and never saying no really will get you for far. Um, so the New Kids on the Block is one of them. I'm gonna go back old school. Um, Paula Abdul, actually recently doing her residency in Las Vegas. Um, Mercedes Javits, uh, what's it from? Shaza Sunset, um, Holly Madison recently. Um, Grace Elizabeth, who's now the face of YSL, Victoria's Secret. I mean, the list goes on. Well, the Victoria's Secret, being a part of the Victoria's Secret fashion show has literally been my dream since I was 10 years old. I promised myself that one day I will be working on all these beautiful women. And showing up at fashion week and meeting people and not saying no had given me these opportunities so last year i got in a phone call after all these background checks and everything um, i was able to grace the presence of not only girls that i have looked up to that was their last show but also some new new models as well and as soon as i entered that room it was just a game changer I feel like it completely changed my mind as a stylist of 
who I wanted to be and where I wanted to be. It kind of just elevated my mind in, in general to really keep, ed like keep elevated, keep educated, and continuously do not say no to anything. Whether it's to assist somebody, you're never gonna be too good. I think that's really, really important as you get older as a stylist and you'd be surprised what's gonna come out of it. I have done hair extensions from the get-go, age 10. It may not be legally, but I, I don't know if you guys remember, but I actually used to do the extensions that were glued to the actual scalp. That's what I started off as. And as soon as I started working in the salon, which was age 17, since then, that has always been my number one source of income. I have been with the company now for 10 years. Still going strong. My role as Hair Talks Artistic Director is, you know, providing the guidance for the artistic vision, you know, creating education throughout the year, not only in classroom, but also on platform, and creating content. The image, the imagery of, you know, what we all stand behind. This is my favorite question. How do I stay inspired? A crazy soul like me that gets bored very easy, traveling. Traveling is my number one reason why I stay inspired on a daily basis. You know, the more you travel, the more people you meet. And whether it's between nature, different people, different countries, different cities, for some reason it stimulates my creative energy and it kind of rejuvenates. And as soon as I get back home, or even if I am wherever I'm at, I just want to create. I feel like I inspire the other artists on my team by helping them think outside the box. You know, inviting them to collaborate, show them something that they wouldn't really think of. Providing them elements that make them uncomfortable and tell them to create from there. I think Hair Talk expanding their product line is absolutely brilliant. You know, the more you know, the more you grow. And as an artist, you want to have the opportunity to never say no. So if a client isn't good with having tape-ins and they're really active, or they swim a lot or they do hot yoga, now you have another option to go to instead of really, you know, turning them away. The advantage of offering extensions as a stylist is it's going to support your shopping habit, <laughs> but not only giving your clients exactly what they want when they want it, that instant gratification, we are becoming the plastic surgeons of our industry. And I think that's really important these days, not only as giving them instant gratification, but also time is money, starting to work smarter, not harder, and not having to compromise the integrity of their hair. Just adding extensions, it's kind of like a double whammy. <laughs> Continuing education is probably the most important thing. Being behind the chair and also being a session stylist. You need to know everything and anything. It doesn't matter if you've, you've learned it already. Every single stylist teaches teaches it a different way they deliver it in a different form and I'm gonna say it over and over again the more you know the more you grow in your career and elevate yourself and set yourself apart from other stylists never stop learning because once you stop learning you're gonna feel stagnant you're gonna get bored and nothing worse than having a stylist that is completely stagnant and bored it comes out in their work not only will their clients see it, but now we have such a huge platform, social media, that will definitely show your growth not being elevated, staying stagnant. Top three is, well, let's see, Puff Me by Design Me. It's a must, must. And 
weigh their actual dry shampoo. The scent is to die for, and it actually really does what it's supposed to do. And Shorts Cough, my all-time favorite, their Freeze Hairspray 4 editorial, very, very stiff, sleek looks. Past or present, can we have two? My hair hero past is obviously Videl Sassoon. The way that his mind just thought at all times, especially with like the whole hair cutting world. And now, I think it's a little bit different. I'm going in a different direction. Um, Justine Margine is a session stylist, works a lot with fashion shows, editorial shoots. I really aspire to be a stylist like her. Being able to travel, still create, and kind of, you know, be in charge of her destination, her next stop.